Item number SCP-2456 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures Due to the mimetic nature of SCP-2456, as well as the high number of suspected infected individuals, complete containment of SCP-2456 is not physically possible with current Foundation technology. Foundation researchers currently develop thematic methods of neutralizing all SCP-2456 instances in the wild. Access to any manuscripts documenting past SCP-2456 Alpha instances is limited to Level 3 Plus personnel currently involved in Project Montague. While active Alpha instances are rare in the wild, SCP-2456 is categorized as a Class III memetic hazard and is considered a high priority. Webcrawler GH739U, Lorem Ipsum, is set to scan for any keywords related to SCP-2456-1 on various social media sites, cult databases, and domains. Once identified, Alpha instances are to be retrieved by suitable field agents and brought to Site-33. Alpha instances on the research must be kept in a Class III MKHC. Testing with D-Class is limited to Level 3 personnel. All testing with active SCP-2456 instances have been halted. Testing is limited to the Alpha state of SCP-2456 and must be under the oversight of Level 4 personnel. Under no circumstances should two active Alpha instances ever be introduced to one another. In the case of a breach, Site-33 is to initiate lockdown procedures and Class III memetic kill agents will be dispensed throughout the facility. See Incident 2456-C for more details. If SCP-2456 reaches epidemic levels, the use of Protocol MOBAB in its final or prototype form is pre-approved. Mobile Task Force Psi-10 Salt Sowers, is assigned to handle cleanup of the aftermath, in addition to managing total suppression of media. SCP-2456 is believed to be a mimetic parasite that is present in an estimated 0.7% of the human population. SCP-2456 lays dormant in a majority of the affected, and is not contagious in its initial form. Possible signs of SCP-2456 infection include an affinity toward astrology, astronomy, and or various pseudosciences, an increased proficiency in speaking foreign dialects, particularly those in the Balto-Slavic and Afro-Asiatic regions, prolonged episodes of acute psychosis and paranoia, OCD and a high attention span for geometrical shapes, patterns, and sequences of five, dissociative identity disorder. SCP-2456 will leave its dormant state once several stress triggers have been activated, and the subject will then undergo an alpha event. The subject will fall into a period of advanced REM sleep, lasting up to three to four days. After awakening, alpha instances will claim to have had a series of vivid cryptid dreams. These consist of visions of past prophets from assorted theologies being executed by a saber or sword, and celestial bodies dancing in the sky. The SCP-2456 strain as found in Alpha instances can be eliminated with the use of Class D amnestics during this time. Following the Alpha event, the subject relapses back into a six-day to six-year dormancy, followed by their beta state. During this time, the Alpha instance will begin preaching SCP-2456-1, an abstract theology that is the only known transmissible form of SCP-2456. Subjects infected in this way are referred to as beta instances. Infection rates are high in observed subjects, with an average 70% success rate at an average 4% falloff. Knowledge of SCP-2456-1 and of its core components is not contagious. Infection requires direct auditory contact with an alpha instance or beta instance, and the victim must have strong pre-existing religious beliefs beforehand. SCP-2456-1 is always monotheistic in nature, and can be characterized by several distinguishable qualities. SCP-2456-1 will begin as a variation of an existing theology. The number 5 will appear frequently in written doctrine. Godhead figures are synonymous with the Sun, and are believed to bring about a future apocalypse. Mentions of a non-existent Gizemprix C uncommonly appear in scripture. Foundation research is currently searching for a correlation with SCP. 
many references to celestial objects, based on existing astronomical knowledge of the time. The appearance of hands in regular quadrilaterals and religious icons and symbols. Religious symbols of the sun have some limited form of mathematical significance. SCP-2456-1 has a weak reality warping effect that varies with every iteration, and in its initial state it's virtually harmless. With every new beta instance created, this effect grows exponentially in radius and strength. SCP-2456-1 also incites violence and aggression, commonly leading to self-mutilation and warlike behavior among the infected. Beta instances actively seek out the uninfected, and will either spread SCP-2456 infection or attempt to murder them. Dormant SCP-2456 Alpha instances are immune to infection by SCP-2456-1, and may aggressively react if exposed. However, Exposure to SCP-2456-1 causes stress in the subject, and will increase the chances of SCP-2456 activation. If two active Alpha instances ever come into contact, then please see Incident 2456-C. No SCP-2456 Alpha instance has been successful in infecting more than 5% of the existing human population. Current Foundation simulations indicate a CK-class end-of-the-world scenario if SCP-2456 infection rates ever exceed 7%, with the contagion becoming virulent to the point where treatment becomes impossible. In addition to this, SCP-2456-1 reality warping effect is likely to fracture the integrity of space-time at those levels. If infection rates exceed 96%, SCP-2456-1 is predicted to Discovery. SCP-2456 was first discovered by an unscheduled raid on a Serpent's Hand base in Eugene, Oregon. On June 10, 2016, Mobile Task Force Tau-9 bookworms were charged with the acquisition of a copy of SCP, which was believed to have been stowed in an abandoned industrial warehouse. Serpent's Hand members were discovered inside upon break and entry, and a firefight ensued. Foundation casualties totaled 11. After recovery of SCP and other related anomalous artifacts, a wooden crate was found next to a furnace with the lettering Fifth Cycle of the Mind stamped onto its side. The cache was discovered to contain numerous fifths texts, including an extra copy of SCP and a weathered note which read, George, this is our latest catch. Please burn these as soon as you can at your discretion. Don't let the idiots find this. L.S. At the bottom of the stockpile, several aged manuscripts were uncovered that detailed past SCP-2456-1 instances, and alarmed Foundation historians about a possible unidentified SCP. Below is a list of past SCP-2456-1 instances. As of now, there are six known variations of SCP-2456-1. However, research has shown potential evidence of an additional more. Descriptions may be added or changed if new information is uncovered. A recent server breach completely unrelated to 2456 somehow corrupted the files. I've done did about everything to fix it, but if anyone knows that the system's still acting up, please give me a call. You know the number. Eric SCP-24561-A Name God-Worshipping Society SCP-2456-Alpha Hongshu Quan Route Scale 5 Complementary Theology Confucianism Catholicism Due to political instability, in addition to Xu Quan's weak state of body and mind, SCP-2456 was activated in early 1837. Xu Quan experienced vivid hallucinations based on his past knowledge of Confucianism and interactions with Christian evangelicals. During his beta state, Xu Quan went into a waxing period of approximately six years after which SCP-24561-A was created. The local Hakka population was the first to experience infection, but rising tensions with the government led to the creation of the Taiping Army, which became the major factor for widespread SCP-2456 contamination. Although not armed with sophisticated weaponry, the Taiping Army completely devastated the Chinese landscape. During its 14-year lifespan, it had marched through every province of China. The Taiping Heavenly Kingdom of Peace only further increased viability, but weakened as SCP-2456 infection rates slowed down. 
One of the more prevalent properties of SCP-2456-1A was its ability to cause full nuclear transmutation of biological organisms. Accounts related to SCP-2456-1A show that beta instances would often involuntarily transform themselves into piles of geological matter. When researching the areas as described in these accounts, Foundation geologists found traces of human feces and saliva in pockets of igneous rock, and hominid DNA bonded to sediment. SCP-2456-1b Name Cult of Aten SCP-2456-Alpha Unidentified Round Scale 2 Complementary Theology Egyptian Mythos Although Akhenaten of Armana was the leader of SCP-2456-1b, evidence shows that SCP-2456-1b originated from a scribe or mentor that was particularly close to the pharaoh. Akhenaten was a very aggressive beta instance, using its power as head of state to condemn worship of all Egyptian deities. Temples dedicated to Aten were generally peaceful. Foundation archaeological evidence shows that instruments dedicated to self-mutilation, removal of the heart, and were present in several major temples. Several temporal and spatial shifts were common during the lifespan of SCP-2456-1b. One scribe's account indicates that the days were occasionally stretched out, and celestial bodies did not behave as they had once used to. At one point, the midday sun did not set for five days, causing a drought along the bank of the Nile, and sparking a peasant's riot near one of Aten's temples. Additional Egyptian astronomical charts show constellations, nebula, and star systems that are non-existent, or are depicted in incorrect placements. Further. A planet translated to Nibu appears commonly in astronomical accounts, and was described as being half the size of Venus, but would pulse with light in five-second intervals. SCP-2456-1C Name Undetermined SCP-2456-Alpha Undetermined Route Scale 3 Complementary Theology Aztec Mythos Little is known about the origins of SCP-2456-1C, but its enormous impact on the Aztecs is evident. The Aztec deity Tenadia is most likely an aspect of SCP-2456-1C that had infiltrated Aztec culture and society. The retrieval of Aztec texts from the serpent's hand see discovery, provides evidence for this theory. Sacrifices of the heart of Tenadia were very common and may have even started solely because of SCP-2456. If this is the case, casualties linked to SCP-2456-1C could easily number around 56 Although not a complete version of SCP-2456-1C, the worship of Tenadia still caused a mild reality-warping effect throughout the Empire. Anomalous reports include accounts of the Sun and Moon being eclipsed by unknown celestial objects, lasting for weeks on end. Rarely, cadavers from past sacrifices would reanimate and attack civilians in an aggressive behavior, immobilize them and reach it into their throats to pull out their <laughs> Coastal regions of the Aztec Empire suffered greatly from a periodical glowing red poison that killed off fish in the sea, caused tissue necrosis in humans, and formed large blood clots in the lungs. This is likely to result from bioluminescent dinoflagellants which is unusual given the areas of occurrence, and the symptoms of infection. Note, a codex describing Tenadia in detail seems to indicate SCP-2456-1C originating from the epi Olmex. A research party has been sent to Veracruz to uncover the genesis of SCP-2456-1C. Scheduled time of return, May 17, 2017. SCP-2456-1D Name: Cult of the Supreme Being, SCP-2456-Alpha Augustin Bon Joseph de Rospierre, see Document 2456-A Route Scale 1 Complementary Theology, Cult of Reason, Catholicism Due to the small longevity of SCP-2456-1D, not much can be said about its traits, as it had not experienced widespread virability. Although it did not garner enough followers to cause intense reality-warping effects, some anomalous characteristics were still prevalent. Since the French Revolution was underway, 
It is impossible to estimate all casualties linked to SCP-2456. However, Jacobin letters and diary entries show that Maximilian Robespierre had become more animalistic and ruthless in his executions, as well as implementing a large daily quota. Incorporeal manifestations were visible in the Parisian streets, as well as sudden dimensional shifts in various salons and smoking parlors around the city. A manuscript detailing the Alpha instance can be found in Document 2456-A. SCP-2456-1-E Name Undetermined SCP-2456-Alpha Undetermined Round Scale Undetermined Complementary Theology Undetermined System Error Data corrupted. Please see a network administrator for more details. SCP-2456-1-F Name SCP-2456-Alpha Undetermined Route Scale 8 Complementary the System Error Data Corrupted Please see a network administrator for more details. System Error Data Corrupted Please see a network administrator for more details. Syndrome. Protocol of Euch. System error. Data corrupted. Please see a network administrator for more details. CP2456 Alpha is still at large. Document 2456A. The following excerpts are taken from text recovered by the serpent's hand. They have been translated from their native scripts into the English vernacular in addition to being analyzed and deemed safe from any potential cognito hazards. A full transcript can be obtained by contacting the Department of Anomalous Text. From Wisdoms of the Heavenly King, circa 1861 And so the Prophet stood on the edge of the heavens, and looked down to the poor and weary below. And the Great Prophet sat inside, for men and women groveled in the filth and ash of great mountains. And so he spoke. And his children wept, for they understood, standing so terribly close to the stars. He followed the smoke until the smoke had turned into steam, then mist, then vapor. He met the man from the west, who lived in the south, to further his knowledge of the great dream. He studied for five months, and on the fifth day of the fifth month, the great prophet understood. The man from the west, who lived in the south, left with haste and refused to assist the Great Prophet's mission. The Prophet was angered, but understood. The man simply needed time to itself, and formulate his own opinion and vision. And so the Great Prophet led the people of Cinders from the ashes, and they waged war when attacked. The armies of the Usurper attacked at the dawn of the new year, but the sun was on our side, and we prevailed. They lost and ran, but the ones that were left behind faced the Prophet and they understood, and on the fifth day they turned into ebony tar, black sand, and white salt. Think five irrational thoughts a day. A student approaches his master and asks, We are born, we develop, and we toil until our death. Is this not our fate? The wise master replied, Our world withers away five pieces at a time, but the stars will always die in threes. The brash student, naive as he was, called his brave master a fool. Repay all debts due before a departure. Two men look up at a star-filled sky. One asks to the other, Will we forever be bound to the celestial bodies? The other replies, They had never been there, but you can make it so. Five spokes of a broken star. Five elements that forever spar. Five senses to evoke the mind. Five pieces slowly unwind. A black moon howling is a vision unworthy of one sight. From a verse of the great hymn of the Aten, Thou claimest the world for its own, according to thy desire, but given the heart to its sole son, the king who lives by Mot, the lord of the two lands. Nefer Hekper, soul one of Re, champion of the western Nile, and the humble scribe, my appreciable mentor. The messenger of thy glory rises alongside you unforgotten. The stars and the earth command to thy wishes. Thou alone art their lifetime, a candle in the dark. Thou risest with them, and thou shalt die with them as well. In thine cycle through the sky, thou sendest visions from the heavens. A distant mirage, light fires in the water. 
thou livest in the deepest dredges of the great Gizemprick Sea. Thou didst perish amongst the harlots, in the fifth day of the solstice, in the fifth year of the summer harvest, thou didst suffer. But no matter the cause, no matter the threat, thou shalt live on to indulge the next world with thy divine antipathy. So says the black moon of the winter months. Entries taken from the diary of Augustin Bon Joseph de Robespierre, November 11, 1793 to July 27, 1794. 21 Brumaire II. La Fête de la Raison has been an unimaginable success. The Jacobins parade in the streets, throwing flowers in the air, children sing and laugh. The era of change has begun, but alas, the age of tyranny has not yet ended. The Frenchmen pride in their progressiveness, but it is too soon to celebrate. 29 Brumaire II My dear brother Maximilian has voiced his concern about the cult of reason. I received an epistle from him while I was in my parlor, requesting my sole presence in the salon during the twilight hours. I found him in the corner, reading a paper in a booth, and he met my gaze with leering eyes. He raged on in about the vileness of the feast, the hypocrisy of the officials that organized it. I sat on the opposite side, pipe in hand, and stared at him bemusingly. My brother is a visionary, but at times like these, his thoughts simply consume him. Give him time, and he will understand there's nothing to fear of change. 23 Fremere II I dreamt the most peculiar dream last night, but unlike the rest, it has invaded my reveries. A vivid thought that eats up my very mind. Sineteka? Unintelligible. 30 Fremere II I see the dream more clearly now. A belligerent ruler that defies all odds and expectations. It will reconquer the world using France as its figurehead. The Pope slain. The King dead. The world subservient. All for the glory to the one true King. People celebrating both the science and the spirit of the world. A king must always exist in society. My brother must reason with me. I must share the wonders of this illuminating message. 13 Nevos II I have received a letter back from my brother. In it was nothing more than a crude sketch of a ship sailing on the sea, far away into nothingness. I worry for him sometimes. I shall send for a carriage tomorrow and take myself to his home. I only wish to share the dream, but it seems to have become a new obsession. 14 Nivos II I knocked at his door, but no answer came in return. It seemed almost as if no one had lived there for some time. I paranoically began to believe that my brother had vanished alongside my good friend Sebastian, who I could no longer find ever since I shared my dream with him. However, I continued my racket until the door slowly creaked open. The terrified expression of my brother peered out behind chains. He relaxed upon realization that it was just my sole company and hastily ushered me inside. He poured me a cold cup of tea, and began to bash me with questions about the dream. I told him everything, even the thoughts of culthood that wrenched my very mind. He grew visibly excited with every new sentence, and began to write notes in a small sketchbook of his. I share his joy, change is always good for the heart, but I fear for his health. His hands are like those I've seen in medical journals, of the dead and dying. 15 Nevos II I had returned to his tenancy, but nobody was home. The neighbor says that he saw my brother leaving his abode in the early hours, but Robespierre's destination could not determine. I asked if he thought my brother looked ill with any malady, but was astonished to hear the antithetical. Most curious. 18 Floriel II Le culte et supreme has been formally announced. The members of the Council grumble with suspicion but give it time, and time we need, and our numbers will surely amass. Date missing. I have begun seeing it. Our power grows, and the nightmare swells. The other day, I was sitting on a bench reading a book of poetry, and a man approached me. He asked me for a louis d'or, like some tramp that infests the streets, but he said that he needed a coin to pay the ferryman, otherwise he wouldn't be able to cross the stream. He held out his hat and I put in, but the man said nothing in return. How rude. 
but the Headless can't speak after all, and so he went on his merry way, the sun reflecting his patches of bone, and disappeared after passing the trunk of an oak tree. The day after, I entered the local salon, but a crisp cloud of smoke and water enveloped the air. I had accidentally stumbled upon a smoking room, but not any normal smoking room. The Duke of Dirkwood sat on his sequin throne. I fearfully trembled and bowed down to the presence of the gracious Earl, and kissed his left foot, and he graciously patted my head with one of the bulbous hands. The other held a long opium pipe, the third a scimitar, but alas, the last two were chained. The five heads scowled in scorn as they fought their shackles, and he roared like that of a wonderful beast. A monster worth sacrifice, a lion worth giving one's flesh. Let him feast, like wonderful maggots that grow on my skin. Date missing. The streets run pink with blood and agony. I can hear their screams even after their heads topple in the basket. So much blood. So much blood. Blood. And blood and blood. They erupt from the corpses like geysers and daggers in the dead of the night. It's not enough to satiate a growing hunger. My brother, he doesn't understand. He slogs through the nightmare, hoping to enter the paradise. Empty promises from an empty lord, but he is our lord nonetheless. 9 Thermidor II Forgive me, dear brother. In these past few days, the entire world has been afflicted with Lodemont's. I am as guilty as you are, but you should not have deserved such a demeaning fate. I gave you those inbred thoughts. The dark whispers that consume me have taken a hold of you. You've lost something in your eyes, brother. It has been replaced with a bright and poisonous light, like that of a distant star. Now, not even your death will win you your freedom. Punish me, O King. Let me suffer for those who have suffered. Addendum 2456-1 On December 21, 2016, during a scheduled comb of Foundation servers, a firewall sounded an alarm in response to an unidentifiable audio file sent to researcher Samuel. No Foundation credentials could be found, but the file was traced to a cubicle that had been vacant for six years. Unusually, the hardware had been short-circuited and badly corroded, with traces of pyruvic acid, sea brine, and burnt heart tissue found in the CPU. Although the terminal was not damaged beyond repair, the file was one of few items deemed salvageable, as the rest became corrupted from the damages. Attempts to restore the full audio file have failed. A transcript of the recovered portion can be found below. Orked with the Foundation for twenty years now. I've seen men bleed out because of a song dedicated to a goddamn mountain. I've heard of a skip that forces its victims to suture their mouths shut, and I've tested countless D-Class on books that break their bodies, their minds, and whisk their existence away into a land of fiction and fantasy. But now it's me that's dying. If you could call it that. In truth, my soul is slowly burning away, and I'm fucking terrified. I don't know how much of what I'm about to say is true. Simon probably had the best understanding of this thing out of all of us. Simon. Now that's a name I haven't heard of in a long time, but it doesn't really matter. He's gone now, and no one seems to care. It was just me, Simon, Charlie, and… We were assigned to SCP-2456 ever since it was first identified. Our mission was simple. The catalog all past occurrences of SCP-2456-1. This wasn't the first time I dealt with memetics, nor was it the first time I dealt with a Keter class, but this task seemed simpler than my previous ones. Testing with D-Class dumbs you down after the first couple of weeks, but you never really get used to it. I was actually almost relieved once I got transferred. Was the first one to go. One minute I was having my lunch with him, the next he's on the floor screaming about visions of the sea and the archons of a trilopic world. They dragged him to the infirmary, but not before he managed to stab a guard's leg with a dinner fork. I asked to see him after an hour had passed. Imagine just how surprised I felt when they told me that no patients had been admitted in the past four hours. This skip is relatively new. We just don't fully understand all of it, and it seems we only have a fraction of the information. And that's where the danger lies. To simply put it, there is a third state of SCP-2456 that's gone unrecorded. A gamma state, if you will. Picture a DNA molecule. 
How does it create proteins? I know. Ask any lab boy that question around here, and they'll scoff and treat you as if you're some kind of half-wit. Well, not to bore anyone with the specifics, but basic protein synthesis requires two major steps. The first one, transcription, is RNA polymerase building RNA molecules that detail instructions. DNA translation, in its most basic definition, is the RNA molecule being read. And that creates the product. Dash tRNA first brings methionin, and the chain ends with either amber, or ochre, or opal. Congratulations, you've just made the primary structure of a protein. SCP-2456-2 is an incredibly potent antimeme, capable of causing dramatic and localized dimensional shifts. It's very delicate, very fragile, and requires careful preparation. A beta instance is the indirect vector for SCP-2456-2 infection. Whenever a beta instance writes information about SCP-2456-1, a gamma instance is created. If a subject reads the gamma instances, there is a possibility that SCP-2456-2 will enter the subject. The subject will slowly vanish from existence, and all records and knowledge of the subject will disappear alongside it. However, this process is incredibly flawed. Sometimes a corpse is all that remains, sometimes just a name, and from personal accounts, SCP-2456-2 is capable of causing vivid hallucinations and depositing false memories in the subject. Simon kept telling me stories about his life when he succumbed to this thing, and they always seemed to change. We didn't know this at first. Charlie told me that it was probably a phantom alphabet causing us to become ghosts. I told Charlie to shut up. I honestly don't know what stupid fuck hired that man. Simon, though, he was the brighter one. He had a theory that SCP-2456 has more to it than meets the eye. He went missing three days ago. We were in the same room. I just turn around for one second, and he's gone. Only his favorite coffee cup, the one that's always by his side, where Snoopy's wearing that goofy-looking Christmas hat, lay half-empty on the floor. Why didn't the whole fucking world collapse back in 05? The entire US population had practically read that damn monstrosity. Personally, I'm not too sure. I think that something went wrong. I think the Fifth Church doesn't fully understand SCP-2456. And so, SCP-1425 failed to become a stable version of SCP-2456-2. Gamma instances can't create beta instances. SCP-2456 just becomes too weak at that level of infection. Instead of beta instances, SCP-1425 created alpha instances. But even then, I think that it did work at some level. What was that woman's name? The talk show host? I only just realized that she never reappeared. The Foundation does not have a full understanding of this particular skip. The problem is, it's not a parasite. SCP-2456 is the dream. A slumbering king rests dead in the water, fractured into five pieces. He shuffles through an eternal nightmare. A usurper has claimed his throne, but he is not fully unconscious. The fifth king has set his sights onto this world, and will burn the earth with an undying flame, just to punish the traitors that locked him away. His anger is one that is unbridled, and so he shares the dream. They were chosen for a specific reason. They were his champions, destined to share the world with his glory. Destined to bathe the world in the blood of his interlopers and remind everyone of their true master. Even the strongest hunger, and sometimes they just gotta take a little bite. Sacrifice by blood is what it desires. Sacrifice by souls is what it requires. I feel it happening to me too. Even as I write, they whisper to me, unintelligible. I dream terrible, terrible things. Sometimes of the number five, sometimes of the number six, rarely of the number four. I feel them too, writhing in my skin, and oh, possible cognito hazard as well? That explains many things. Of a little lambent liar lurking in a lonely sea, a special star signaling songs ever so carefully and men that mind may find unintelligible if they dig a little too hard. Have you ever wondered what the phrase AA means? No, stop it. I'm digging a little too hard, aren't I? But just wonder, how far down does the rabbit hole go?
as deep as the tower door, bringing me to a land of hedonism and fun? Or as deep as the Great Lake, whose sorry inhabitants float in the water and stare into the fiery abyss of the Great Sun? My time is almost up, and just remember, remember, remember. Why do you think we never knew? The Foundation is old, but the world is older. Most likely, we've had some help. A group as old as the Fifth King, trying to put an end to his nightmare. I wouldn't even be surprised if the Serpent's hand was partially involved in keeping his forces at bay. After all, we did find those Gamma instances at their headquarters. But now they are in the hands of the Foundation, and they will never be destroyed. I can hear the fields of Asphodel calling my name. The air is suddenly getting thicker. I can already smell that sweet sea breeze. Follow the smoke that sits on the water. Listen to the foghorns calling for their dead companions, the sea foam crashing against the tide. I am not ready, for I am not worthy. This was Senior Researcher John Richards signing off, and one last thing before I step into the water. Once history is forgotten, it is of course doomed to repeat itself, and the sixth cycle will forevermore echo. Note, Foundation records of the persons listed in the transcript, in addition to one John Richards, are non-existent. However, these men may be related to sudden unexplained disappearances of Foundation officials. A Foundation audit is currently underway. 053